The movie begins in the north, at a Viking village called Burke, located on the meridian of misery. The protagonist is a boy named Hiccup, who is a young Viking. He is the son of Stoic the Vast, the chief captain of Burke. According to Hiccup, the Vikings have stubbornness issues. Stubbornness is probably the only characteristic that Hiccup has that is similar to his fellow Vikings. Physical strength. Hiccup doesn't have it, but he does have the courage. Compared to the usual villages that have pests and insects, the village of Burke has dragons. In Hiccup's village, people fight and slain dragons for generations, except for him. It is the way they live. Hiccup cannot even lift a hammer nor swing an axe and so his peers perceive him to be weak. Even though he was the son of the chief captain of their village, the people of Burke still see him is nothing alike if compared to his father. Eliminating dragons in Burke is a big deal, and Hiccup wishes to be a part of it. Hiccup is determined to be strong, get a girlfriend, and eliminate a Night Fury as he always ends up getting bullied by his peers for his he is weak and not considered a normal Viking. Little did they know, Hiccup will be the one to change their perceptions about dragons. Instead of fighting dragons, Hiccup chooses to make a mechanical device while working with Gobber, the village blacksmith. Mostly, what Hiccup creates always fails. Hiccup uses a bola's launcher to shoot a Night Fury during an attack in their village one night. Hiccup gets chased by dragons and is almost eliminated by a dragon but his fellow Vikings come to his aid and save him. Hiccup gets distracted and stunned because he managed to shoot a Night Fury, but no one saw it. That is why when he says how he manages to hit a Night Fury to his fellow Vikings, no one believes him because the Night Fury stands alone as the rarest and most dangerous dragon of all. A dragon no one has ever managed to eliminate and Hiccup wants to be the first to do so. The next morning, Hiccup goes on a trip to the forest and brings a knife with him. On his way, he sees a track of broken trees which implies that something might have fallen from the sky. He tracks the location of the object and sees the Night Fury trapped in a net. At first, in his thought, he plans to eliminate the dragon because it is the perfect moment since the dragon was trapped and cannot move. The ropes are wrapped around its huge body. He thinks of bringing the Night Fury's heart to his father, however, Hiccup's plan changes when he sees himself in the dragon's state. As the soft person that he is, he sets the poor dragon free from the net. After freeing the dragon, Hiccup goes home, sees his dad, and decides to tell him that he cannot fight dragons. However, Stoic, his father tells him it is his duty as the future chief of the village to fight dragons and that he should go to training. Before they see each other, Stoic talks to Gobber regarding Hiccup. Stoic is unsure if should he allow Hiccup to fight dragons, because of his physical strength and worries that it might be a hindrance. The possibility of Hiccup's demise while fighting dragons scares him. Stoic realizes that he cannot always protect Hiccup from danger, so he decides to allow Hiccup to go out and fight dragons just like normal Vikings do. As Hiccup enters the training camp, he sees his fellow teenagers and friends named Fishlegs, the twins called Roughnut and Toughnut, Snotloud, and Astrid, whom Hiccup has a crush on. As he fails to fight the dragon in their training, Hiccup goes back to the forest and accidentally sees Night Fury again who is struggling to fly because of his injured tail fin. Hiccup knows that it was his fault, because of the bola's launcher that he used to shoot the poor Night Fury. The sound of the thunders resounds throughout the night when Hiccup returns to the training camp and sees his fellow teenagers. Gobber instructs the teens to read the book that he gave them, a book containing all the information about dragons and their characteristics. Astrid and her friends leave and Hiccup has nothing to pick from so stays up to read. There he sees the weaknesses of the dragons, but when he reaches the page dedicated to the Night Fury, he discovers that there are no pieces of information in the book about the dragon. Hiccup wonders the whole night. He figures out the next morning by asking Gobber about the Night Fury that no one ever saw or rode that dragon before. As usual, Hiccup fails again in their training. After that, he returns to the forest to bring loads of fish for the Night Fury, whom he names Toothless because of the dragon's retractable teeth. Toothless is hesitant to take the food as he thinks that Hiccup is a stranger and an enemy. Dragons don't trust Vikings, however, since Hiccup has a soft spot in his heart, he tries to befriend the dragon by giving food and playing with the dragon. Hiccup attempts to touch the Night Fury, but the dragon is still doubting. After many times of trying, the dragon finally let him. The next day, Hiccup proceeds to make a tail fin that is similar to Toothless's using scrap metals and wood. Hiccup goes to the forest again, gives the dragon food, and then continues to put up the prosthetic tail fin that he designed, allowing Toothless to fly with the help of Hiccup who riding him. In Hiccup's training, he manages to tame a captured dragon and makes it listen to him. He has learned to do that because of Toothless's behavior which he observed during their times together. His peers watch in amazement, including Gobber who cannot believe what Hiccup did. Though, Astrid finds it suspicious how he manages to do that because no one has expected it to happen. How can a weak Viking manage to know how to train dragons? The more Hiccup bonds with Toothless, the more he learns about the dragon's behavior. Slowly, Hiccup starts to get the hang of it better than any one of his peers. The admiration of his fellow Vikings still continues, but Astrid keeps getting more suspicious. Stoic, who was unsuccessful in finding and destroying the dragon's nest when he went home, 
bursts in delight upon hearing the news that Hiccup was judged to be the winner of his dragon training. He cannot hide how proud he is of his son. In the final exam, Hiccup is required to terminate a dragon. He thinks of running away with Toothless but Astrid catches him. Astrid sees Hiccup going to the forest and decides to follow him for the reason that Astrid finds Hiccup suspicious. What Astrid finds leaves her in shock, while Hiccup tries to hide Toothless. However, Toothless growls and blows their cover. Hiccup just thinks of a way to let Astrid know that Toothless is friendly and decides to show her by making her ride Toothless with him. Astrid sees the wonderful view of the sky and the sea and agrees to what Hiccup wanted, to let him explain first. While they are on a sunset flight, a flock of dragons shows up beside Toothless. Hiccup and Astrid bow their heads to avoid being seen by the dragons. Toothless gets hypnotized and is dragged to the dragon's nest, the one that the Vikings are looking for for ages. There, a gargantuan dragon named the Red Death summons the smaller dragons to feed them alive food to avoid being eaten themselves. Astrid wants to tell Stoic that Hiccup found the dragon's nest, however, Hiccup is afraid that they will hurt Toothless. Hiccup asks for a day to think about what they should do. The next day comes, so is Hiccup's final examination of terminating a dragon where hundreds of fellow Vikings watch from above. But Hiccup has a different plan, to show the Vikings and his whole village that dragons are friendly, and they don't need to terminate them. However, Stoic is unhappy with what he sees. When Hiccup tries to tame the dragon, Stoic commands them to stop the fight which makes the dragon angry. The dragon goes rogue and tries to go for Hiccup. When the dragon roars, Toothless wakes up and hurries to save Hiccup from the dragon. Toothless fights the dragon that is oppressing Hiccup. Stoic and the Vikings get dumbfounded when they see a Night Fury. Hiccup's father goes on to capture Toothless and so was the whole village, even though it was against Hiccup's will. When Hiccup and his father talk, Hiccup accidentally says that he has been in the dragon's nest. Hiccup says that only a dragon can find the nest and that the dragons that attacked their village were forced to do that to save themselves from Red Death. Stoic ignored the warnings which Hiccup gives and later disowns Hiccup as his son. Even a bit emotional, Stoic immediately continues the plan to go to the dragon's nest. The Vikings prepare the boats and weapons that will be used on their trip. Along with them is the captured Night Fury to help the Vikings locate the dragon's nest. Hiccup stares into the sky when they left, looking helpless as he can't do anything to help his friend, Toothless. He wonders why he couldn't terminate a dragon when he had the chance to. It would have been easy for everyone and his father. Any Vikings would hurriedly terminate a dragon when they saw one, but not Hiccup. Even though Hiccup is the first Viking who couldn't finish a dragon, he is the first Viking who manages to ride a dragon. As a persistent person Hiccup is, he always has a crazy plan up his sleeves. He just doesn't give up and demonstrates to his peers how to befriend the training dragons and go to Toothless. Stoic and the other Vikings successfully find the dragon's nest and they plan to destroy the mountain to see the dragons. Using big stones, they start to bombard the mountain, which creates a hole. Thousands of dragons come out and fly away. As they celebrate their win, or as they thought, the ground begins to shake and there comes out the awakened Red Death. The Vikings begin to run for their lives, aiming to go back to their boats but the Red Death burns them all, including their weapons, in one breath of fire. Gobber and Stoic are left behind to buy time for their fellow Vikings. While they are baiting the Red Death, Stoic and Gobber see Hiccup and his friends flying and riding the dragons. Hiccup's friends distract the Red Death and Hiccup goes to free Toothless who is still restrained in the burning boat. The boat sinks into the sea, and Hiccup and Toothless start to drown. Stoic comes to the rescue and saves both Toothless and Hiccup. Before Hiccup flies with Toothless to fight the Red Death, Stoic apologizes to his son for what he did. Stoic brought chaos into his people, and Hiccup will fix it for him to save his fellow Vikings who once told him that he doesn't belong to them. Hiccup and Toothless then speed off to lure the Red Death into the sky, setting a trap for the Red Death. They lead the Red Death into the sky where Toothless starts to attack it with his fire breath. The disoriented Red Death breathes fire all around the air which ends up burning Toothless's prosthetic fin. Hiccup instructs Toothless to dive into the sea and lure Red Death into chasing them down. With Hiccup's signal, Toothless flips and changes his trajectory before firing a fireball into the throat of the Red Death. The fireball burns the Red Death's wings causing it to hurtle to the ground. In the explosion, Hiccup falls when they collide on the Red Death's tail. Toothless dives into the fire to save Hiccup. As the smoke clears, Stoic calls for his son but instead finds Toothless lying wearily on the ground without his fin. Stoic kneels and apologizes for causing his own son's demise. As the rest of the Vikings gather to mourn the passing of his Hiccup, Toothless spreads out his wings and reveals that he manages to catch his Hiccup in time. Stoic and the rest celebrate their victory and the safety of Hiccup. The Vikings then start to accept the dragons as their ally. Hiccup wakes up one day and sees Toothless inside his room. He gets shocked and panics that Stoic might know that the dragon is inside his room. He then sees his prosthetic leg that was made by Gobber. In the fight with the Red Death, he, unfortunately, lost one of his legs. He goes outside and finds the dragons flying around and he cannot believe what he is seeing. The people of Berk see him. Hiccup is now admired and celebrated by everyone. 
Because of his courage, the people of Burke were saved, including Astrid who kisses him. The people of Burke start a new era of Vikings and dragons in the same place. Who would have thought that dragons will be their pets and not enemies like before? 300 years of living, and only Hiccup manages to change the perspective of the people of Burke regarding dragons. Stoic is the proudest father for he has a son like Hiccup. The movie ends as the Vikings have a happy and peaceful life in a village full of dragons as their pets.